I've, I've got a couple, few more minutes here for some uh, great questions from our audience. Um, Phil writes, could you please describe the process and time you spend creating arrangements and rehearsing your band? Uh, how and when does this happen? And how soon before the actual concert uh, re is recorded? So you're probably talking about this project. I and think so. Yeah. You know, um, we rehearse for a whole week. So when you're, when you're recording a record, it's a totally different deal, you know. So there were a lot of rehearsal into it. But you know what? Once we sort of get the song and get the arrangement, it's we don't we don't beat it to death, you know, and rehearse it 25 times. Yeah. Um, I'm more really interested in, and this can this this also uh, you know pertains to Sunday morning worship or your worship team. I'm really more concerned about people's hearts and people's mm -hmm. posture. Uh, I've even hired people, and I won't mention names. I've even hired people where maybe I should have hired the other guy because he was the better musician, but I hired the other guy because of his heart. Mm. And uh, so to me, it really comes down to posture and what's your motivation. And my team of people, especially on this record, are so dialed in in terms of heart-wise that uh, I really was not worried about one thing about the evening because they, when they play their instruments, you really know that they're worshiping. And mm -hmm. there was a sort of a, a really unified team of people on stage. Mm -hmm. And so when you have that, that's 90% of your battle. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you want to, you don't want to get up on stage and everybody's out of tune. Yeah. You know? So, uh, <laughs> sort of, sort of got to get that down. And the heart, the heart is the most important thing to me when you're having people on your team. Did you? Uh, well, Eric Meyer writes from Lawrence, Kansas. I'd like to know your top do's and don'ts for worship leaders. Do you have a list? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not sure that I, I'm not sure that I have a list. But I'll, I'll, I will say one thing that. I have walked into a lot of churches and I felt like I was entertained. And you know what? If I'm, I, I don't, I don't want to be entertained when I go to church. If I want to be entertained, I'll go see a movie. You know, yeah. I think that we have to really be careful that we don't get performance. It doesn't become performance. I mean, for me, I think the the one thing my job is obviously put the team together. Hopefully, you've got a list of songs that's really going to be. A, a, a day that we'll never forget. Mm -hmm. I pray that every single Lord may this be a day that we'll never forget, that we'll experience you in a way that we've never experienced you. Uh, but to me, of just going, when you get on stage, how do you disappear? Mm -hmm. How do you just completely disappear? I've led worship with my back to the audience a couple mm -hmm. times. So, and I think there's a way to do that. I think there's a way to, I think there's a way to, to excel and be amazing at your gift and have this tremendous amount of humility. I think there's a way for those both to come together. So It's a real challenge, isn't it, with the technology today? It is. To, uh, because it, there's such a tendency to hypermediate. Right. And, and like, you want to create a sense of um, imminence or intimacy with God, which requires transparency on the one hand, but then you're hanging 20 screens up in the sanctuary, and right. there's all kinds of technology going on. So there's a tendency to hypermediate. Right. The uh, the uh, uh, how do you deal with some of these performance questions? Because after all, music is a performance art. There's no music without a performance. Yeah. Yet you seem to be talking about something that transcends performance. Well, for me, I don't. You know, I find myself not really. I really believe I've found a pretty good balance in not getting up and trying to perform. Even when I start singing a song, mm -hmm. a, a lot of times I'll back off from the microphone. Um, I don't sing the whole song. I just sort of, because I'm inviting, you know, the congregation to really join in and listen. This whole thing is a love song. Let's say, let's take Mighty to say, for example. I mean, let's engage in that song. And and I think the way that I can sort of kind of come in and if everybody's not with me, I can sort of lead. And once they're in, I can kind of pull back. And just be a part of everything that's going on. I think there's I so you think can sense when you're becoming a distraction. Yes, absolutely. From pointing them to God. Yes. As opposed to playing God. Yes. That's uh, that's that's very interesting. That's good. In your opinion, what is the most important aspect of corporate worship? Uh, Jordan asked. The most important aspect of, of worship. corporate worship. Mm. That's a good question. There's a lot of answers to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let me ask you another one. What is your favorite song, worship song? Kevin 
writes. My favorite worship song. Oh, gosh, there's too many of That's those. That's your wife too. wrote. <laughs> that my wife wrote. <laughs> Well, I mean, obviously, I'm, I mean, for me, I'm excited about Deep in Love with You, but oh gosh, we sing, there's all kinds of great songs that we sing. I still love the Chris Tomlin Amazing Grace rendition, um, Love Mighty to Save, which is on the album, Shouting to God, Hillsong Song, you know, that we yes. sing quite a bit at our church. Um, you know, if there's one song that I've written, I wish I had written a lot that I could tell you that I wrote that I really love. If there's one song that I wrote that I feel like it might be yeah. my best song that I've written, it's a song called August Day. Okay. Which is actually on the Go yes. West Young Man record. Yeah. A lot of people think it's a brand new song. Oh, we <laughs> love your new song, August Day. Or they heard Third Day do it, you know. And uh, but it's actually a, it's actually an older song. You know, one of the uh, another song that stood out on on uh, a new Hallelujah, which is a standout record, um, was um, Help Is on the Way. Uh, I can't think of a more appropriate. Song and and we know the help is not on the way from Washington, right, D.C. But uh, the whole idea there's a line in there that you wrote uh, that just echoes the Psalms for me. And I, I I'm wondering if this was a song that had a particular experience for you. And the line was, uh, um, life is tough or life is hard, but God is good. Yeah. And that to me is like the the whole message of the Psalms. Yeah. Is there, how has life been tough for you? Well, I think, gosh, we I think we all have, you know, we all we have the highs and have, have the lows in life, you know, and you know life is good, and then just hard times. You've got good friends are going through tough battles with their marriages, and yeah. or you've lost a loved one, and all that sort of thing. I mean, so it, it's definitely, uh, you know, you, you got two different aspects of life that go on, and that's just part of life. That's when the whole worship thing, you know, we sort of kind of, you know, majesty, healing, rain, amazing grace, whatever. We make a turn because I feel like I still meet so many people who are just having a hard time. And to not address that, and to, you know, I feel like is wrong. So to me in the evening, we felt like we wrote this song. And obviously Israel Houghton was a big part of it and helped yeah. me write it. And to me at the end of the day, going, you know what? God said he would never leave you or forsake you. End of story. You yeah. Know? And so... I believe for whatever people are going through, I believe help is on the way. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I've got my life on it. Yeah. It, this, the song ends with this real confident hope in God, which is another word of worship, Maranatha. Yeah. Our hope is that the Lord comes ultimately. Yeah. It comes now. He has come. He is coming. He is coming again.